we're going to discuss about the offseason. We kind of just did, but we'll, we'll do it again. We'll <laughs> say the exact same words. Run it back. Run action. it back. All right. Uh, Illini portal targets. I typed this in. I didn't know if this is what you want to go over, but yeah, that's fine. what we're going over. Uh, Craig Choate. Is that how you say his name? Anybody know? Let me know if I'm wrong. At Craig H.W. Choate. I'm, that H might be wrong. I don't know. Anyways, uh, he made an unofficial, is, yeah. <laughs> unofficial Google Doc of potential targets. Um, he's got them bro- broke down in guards, wings, and bigs. Uh, we'll go through the guards first. Uh, Dante Maddox Jr., a 6'2 point guard from Toledo. He has one year left. He averaged 14 and a half points per game, 4.3 rebounds per game, around three assists. One and a half steals, 44% from two, 40% from three. Uh, he's currently in Illini's top eight of you know schools he wants to go to or is considering. Uh, how bad do you want Dante Maddox? I, I think you want him pretty bad, don't you? I like him. I mean, he's a point guard. Uh, you'll notice a theme in these players that there are a lot of Midwest guys. Uh, yeah. He's from Chicago Heights, shot at yeah. 40% from three. At Toledo, and if you're going to swing and miss on a Toledo guard like they kind of did last offseason, let's try to do it again this offseason. I mean, um, if you're looking for a true point guard, this is a good – I think this is like a – like I think you need a stop gap at the one between this season and Fears next season. Um, or between next season and the season after, I guess, technically, even though you know, whatever, uh, the 23-24 season is over. But um, – I don't think it's going to happen, but uh, it would make it would make sense if it did. But I think there's, I don't think Illinois is going to push hard enough to do that, I, or or do they? I don't think they need to. But yeah, like I don't well, think this is a player that you need to go all out for in right now. Like I don't, I don't know. I got gotcha. you. Still plenty of fish in the sea. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I just there's a lot of time left. There's more players that could enter. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know. I mean, what's the number one priority in the portal right now for this team? Probably another wing. I, yeah, I would say a big probably. Yeah, um, I guess that's true. I really, I, the, the number one target. Big. Can we just skip down here to, uh, you didn't even write him down. Uh, he's not, why is he not on here? Damn it. Illinois is definitely interested in this guy. This uh, Stanford big, Ray Nall. Uh, uh, he didn't have it on the list. Why so. is he not on that list? That makes no sense to me. But that should be the number one target right now. That okay. is a uh, that's a seven one center who averages fifteen and ten a game in the Pac twelve last year. Uh, he's already played three seasons at Stanford, ninety four games, started fifty nine of them. Uh, shoots at fifty five percent from the field, thirty five percent from three, seventy percent from the free throw line, six point six rebounds per game in his career. Uh, that should be the number one target. You get a seven one big from Stanford who's got a ton of playing time under his belt, a, f- a foreign big too, so you know he can handle the ball and he can. He can do things with the basketball. That should be the number one target if you're looking for a big. Looks like the chat agrees with you. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, a Boonsilla lot of people- wants him. Somebody else said that. Brandon. Eric. Yeah. Um, sure. They're definitely interested in him, too, by the way. Okay. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure they're interested in a lot. This, uh, this is just what the guy had on the thing. Yeah, yep, yep, uh, yep, yep, yep. Can't help it. Uh, other guards, Marcus Hill, 6'4", combo guard from Bowling Green. He's got a year left. Average 20 and a half points per game, five rebounds, two and a half assists, one steal, shot at 44% from two, 29% from three. Um, he's apparently been contacted, and there's interest in him. Uh, I don't know about this guy. I mean – his numbers don't – I mean, 20 points per game is great, but it was at Bowling Green. But his numbers just don't seem to pop to me. So He's got much more of a Damask profile if you're looking for a replacement. Um, guy that doesn't get – doesn't shoot a high percentage from three. Um, does a lot of his damage inside the two-point – or inside the three-point line. Uh, I'm not too concerned about stats in other conferences probably yeah. with, with these guys, but – um, I mean, I think averaging 20 points anywhere is, is good to be fair, but yeah, this is not, I don't think it's going to happen. I know there's a report quote unquote, that's guy also said store was coming here, which a uh, store is not coming here. Like, I would be shocked, <laughs> yeah. Um, if that happens, but, uh, by the way, 219 twos and 25 threes made by Marcus Hill last year. So, uh, 
he gets to the foul line quite a bit, shot 208 free throws, um, and he's, played a ton of minutes. He's from Rockford, so. Yeah, another guy that's nothing. from the area. Big part of it. Um, last guard he had was Selton Miguel, 6'4 combo guard from South Florida. He also has a year left. Um, he averaged 14.5 points per game, 3.2 rebounds, 2.2 assists, 1.2 uh, steals shot 41% from two, 39% from three. Um, Illinois has reached out to him. Uh, I mean, seems like a shooter, so that's good. Um, he, he wasn't much of a shooter <laughs> early on in his career, 22%, 20%, 33%, and then shot 39 this year. So well, I think you'll notice that he uh, did absolutely nothing in terms of quality production at Kansas State in his first two years um, and ended his season against VCU on March 24th. And uh, I, I guess that was uh, some sort of uh, postseason tournament. Uh, he had four points <laughs> on two of 12 shooting. I'm, I'm good on this one. I don't, I don't yeah. I, if, if they're going to get a fifth-year guard, this is not the one that I would want. Yeah. Um. Wings, uh, of course, already got one. Um, the other one on there was AJ Store. Do you want AJ Store? Do we want AJ Store? I wanted him like mid season of Big Ten play, but I don't think I want him anymore. I am very much in the camp at this point of if he decides to come here, fine, fine sure. by me. We'll see. I mean, he's got a Big Ten experience, he's he's really good. Like, I don't, yeah. I the numbers speak for themselves. He's a very good basketball player. I think with the right offense, I think he could be even better. Like I just don't like what Wisconsin does offensively. I know offensively they were good this year in a lot of the season. I don't like what they do offensively, and I don't think it was good for store. I think it was good for playing time and developing more. But like Brandon said, there, I don't think he's he's I don't think he's gonna transfer in the Big Ten. Yeah, and like Illinois fans, like we we don't have to jump on every player that enters the portal. Like I know <laughs> store was committed here. He decommitted here. Who cares? Like it's over. We shouldn't. I don't know why people want him so bad. I have I have little to no interest in in pursuing him. If I'm Illinois, you know, coaching stuff, you got to make a call. I guess do yeah. your due diligence. But I don't think you have to go out of your way to try to make it happen. Like he store should just like go to uh, I don't know the Big Twelve somewhere or the go to the ACC or go to the Big East again. I just I think you know. See, SC, SEC, SEC would probably be a perfect be conference perfect. for him. Yeah, yeah. He's go to Tennessee. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, uh, I don't. I I don't think Illinois is going to go after him. There's supposedly a report that Kansas they wanted a million dollars from Kansas and they offered him seven fifty and he said no. So I, I mean, I, if he's going to go chase money, let him go chase money somewhere. But I don't think that helps your team out at all. So. Yeah. Uh, the three bigs he had, uh, again, he didn't have the Stanford guy. He also had John L. Davis on this, which I haven't heard anything about Illinois even contacting him. I'm guessing he'll end up at, at Michigan, but we'll talk about that later. Um, but the other, but the three bigs, Pharrell Payne, uh, you guys know him, 6'9 from Minnesota. He's got two years left. He averaged 23 minutes a game, 10 points per game, six rebounds. 1.2 1. assists, 1.4 blocks, shot at 60% from two. Didn't take a three all year, I don't believe. I don't know how interested Illinois is in Payne. I thought Payne got a lot better as the season went on last year. So uh, I wouldn't mind him. I just don't I, I don't know if he's the the dominant big he might need. So I feel like Amani Hansberry can do some of the but same he stuff. Does. Yeah. I Payne's agree. a little more advanced, though. He'll be in his third year, but Hansberry is a similar also, profile to me. Yeah. Hansberry puts on a little bit more muscle. Um, I think him and Payne are yeah. the same six, guy. 6'9, six, 255 for, for Payne, 6'8, 225 for Hansberry. So yeah. Hansberry can add 20 in the offseason. I think that could be good. I mean, the big thing with Payne is the rebounding. Um, and there was some offensive uh, prowess shown in certain games down the stretch. I think he had – you know what's shocking to me is that Pharrell Payne against uh, Michigan State on March 14th 
had seven turnovers. How is that possible for a guy who has the ball as little as he does? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's crazy. crazy. But I mean, he ended if if that's it for him at Minnesota, he ended it with uh they lost to Indiana State on March 24th, but he had 16 points on seven of 13 shooting and eight rebounds, three assists, and a steal. So he's a good player. I think he should go to a different conference, though. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Kerry Booth, 6'10 center from Notre Dame. He's got three years left. He played just under 19 minutes per game, averaged six and a half points, 4.3 rebounds, a half of an assist a game, a half of a block a game, 39% from two 30 percent from three i didn't really look at this guy's tall lanky guy right am i crazy he's not like very thick <laughs> yeah he's uh 205 or 610 203 okay so that's tiny by the way um, tiny it is like coleman hawkins is like 225 yeah so yeah yeah i don't i don't understand the interest here unless you think you can develop them i mean it's it's a long-term thing like even coming out of high school he was a four-star 47th overall or he was a four-star 55th overall he's 47th overall in the portal but like i think it's a development thing i think you still need two years out of him probably before you can get any i think if if his dad is the gm of the denver nuggets i think he should go to the state of colorado and play go play colorado or go play colorado state Uh, i think illinois is probably like we see the upside. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how much we would use him. I, I don't think Kerry Booth is going to go to Illinois because I don't think he's going to, if he played that many minutes at Notre Dame, he's not going to play 20 a game at Illinois. I don't think unless he makes a huge leap from year one to year two, but Illinois doesn't, I don't think Illinois is in a position to uh, develop even more guys, especially the guys you want to develop are the guys you bring in out of high school and the guys you bring in as freshmen or, you know, 18, 19 year olds. So I don't see this one happening either. So you think Brad's going to mainly go after guys with a year left? Rather, I mean, uh, no, I, I think. I mean, of course, Jake Davis is doesn't yeah, have a year I, left. I know. But. I, I think, I think it's going to be guys that have Mix a couple years under their belt. Under their belt. When I yeah. Said, you said both, and then I heard both. <laughs> I added a th to belt, um, an extra t as well. Uh, but no, I think I think you, you don't really want to approach it that way. You don't really want to go all one year guys. Like obviously their guard targets here are all one year left guys, but the big targets are maybe that says something. You know, uh, this this Maxime Reynaud from uh, I don't know if it's Reynaud or Reynaud. I mean he's French, so it's probably Reynaud or right. Reynaud. But uh he's a junior third year. So would he have the COVID year? I don't even know. I'm so confused on that. So he did only have one or two left at, at the most. So that should be the guy, though, the Stanford big. If you're looking at any big, that's got to be the guy. Like the next guy is Xavier Amos, six uh, eight forward, Northern Illinois, two years left. I, look, do we really want a six eight? Like, what's he gonna do? Like, he is this I, like is this a Coleman Hawkins replacement? Is what I kind of. I think it's more of a Quincy replacement. Okay. Like six, if he was averaging three assists a game, I'd say more so. You could say both, but six eight. That's the same height as Quincy. Thirty nine percent from three. Similar. Uh, I mean, fine. If, if they need a guy to play the four next year right away, right? That'd be, you know, interesting. Yeah. I'm I'm, I'm good on – I feel like – I don't know. Does this take minutes away from Merez possibly? I don't know. Who knows? You definitely need guys in front of them, though. You don't want to go into the season with your two bigs really? being Hansberry and Johnson. <laughs> I would agree, yeah. I would agree, but I'm, I'm okay with this. If you're going to use him the way they use Quincy, I, I, have to, I haven't watched him play very much though. So I need to see that, see how he plays like the numbers, the profile, the height all reminds me of Quincy, right? But you got to see him play first. Yeah. You get what you're saying. Uh, it seems like everybody wants Illinois to get the guy from Stanford. So that's the guy I'm telling you. Uh, Brandon said Amos is very solid. So. Um, by the way, this Danny Wolf out of Yale that people mentioned earlier, I can just throw this one out there for everybody right now. That's a 0% chance right here. Um, mm. Danny Wolf, I believe, entered the portal on a, with a no contact next to his name. Yeah. And I think if he can he get into Michigan, which I think he will get into Michigan, I think he's going to go to Michigan. Yeah. Uh, which is a great get for them. That's a guy that does a lot of different things on the offensive side. Plus, he's coming from Yale. There's no way he's not going to get into Michigan from an admission standpoint, right? Yeah, he's going to go to Michigan, um, which, you know, 
it, for Michigan, it's pretty much either Wolf or Vlad. So yeah. I would, I, I, I don't think they're going to get both. If they do, then fine. But I would just take Wolf and run with it if you're dusty, but whatever. Um, is there any other targets? I mean, this this Evansville guy, did he commit somewhere? Uh, it didn't. It didn't say that Illinois was was interested. I don't know. There's something about it that says it says uh, status unknown. Yeah. So interest interest yes though. Okay. According to Illinois rivals, uh, they've contacted or done something. But I mean, his name is uh, Ben Hum Humrish Humrishaus. Okay. Forty two percent from three or forty one point four, I guess. Uh, Fourteen point seven points per game. Um. Good offensive player, which is to be expected, I would say, from uh, coming out of Evansville in that conference. You know, you, a lot of good offensive talent in the in the Missouri Valley. Um, who knows? I mean, Illinois had success. The Big Ten as a whole had success bringing in uh, transfers from that uh, conference. You look at Iowa with uh, whatever his name is. You look at uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Lance Jones. So there you yeah. Go. All right. Very exciting. Very exciting. Uh, right. Yeah. 